Hey guys, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shops. And uh, we're actually following instructions today. <clears throat> we are gonna be installing a load or weight distribution hitch here for the camper truck setup thing. You see here, I just have a regular two and five sixteenths hitch like you would use for a regular old utility trailer, which I mean, yeah, you can get away with, but there are immense benefits to having a weight distribution hitch. Specifically, what I'm going for is the sway control. Whenever you're going down the highway, it really keeps that uh, tail from wagging the dog, if you will. So we're gonna go through this whole thing. I'll give you a parts list. We'll do this together and see if we can't get this thing riding flat and level. So the first thing we need to do is uncouple from the original hitch and uh, make sure you have the wheels chalked on the trailer so this thing don't take off on you. Let's go ahead and take some weight off of this thing and uh, get the truck out of the way so we can install the new hitch into the receiver and get things moving here. So in case you guys are wondering, this uh, electric tongue jack is a new install. If you're interested, I made a video about putting this thing together. And if you can see how the head is twisted 90 degrees, well, that's a little modification addition that we did. So if you're interested, check out the video here to see how this happened. Don't get me wrong, the manual one works just fine, but this is just so much easier and user-friendly. So yeah, now that we're uncoupled, let's just disconnect everything, pull forward a bit, and throw the new hitch in. Now that we're fully separated from the trailer here, Simply yank out your regular one. And look at this big mamma jamma here. Now, obviously, I haven't done any unboxing for you because I've already tried uh, putting some things together to save a little bit of time. So this is the Equalizer 10K load leveling hitch. You can tell this thing, uh, if I had to guess, I don't know, this is probably... 80 90 pounds i don't know this is a solid chunk of steel this part up here is cast it's all welded together the receiver hitch itself is solid two inch steel and then you see here i've made my own reducing adapter thing here because the receiver on my truck is two and a half inch this is two inch so i got a quarter inch wall piece of two inch steel tube and uh yeah i cut my own because I am not crazy. The factory ones that you can get from like tractor supply or whatever, see how short this is? It's only about six inches long and my receiver is eight inches deep. So this doesn't cover the entire ID of the hitch. And I really didn't like that. Like we're trying to equalize load here. So why not utilize all of the receiver in the truck? So I got myself a piece of square inch, a uh, square two inch tubing and made my own. That way it utilizes everything in the receiver. I know that's an extra step, but hey, you do you. Let's throw this thing in. Cool, now we got this Mamma Jamma hooked up. Uh, we might actually have to look at the book and see how we gotta start doing this. So one of the very first things we need to do here is take some measurements and some uh, scribbles here of the original ride height of the truck. Because the whole point of this is to get the truck back to the stock ride configuration here so we have good braking and towing ability. So I'm gonna go around to all four corners and measure from the ground to the bottom of the fender well take down some measurements. So whenever we're leveling this thing up, we have something to go off of. So we have a number to get back to. All right, so in the rear here, we're going right from the center of the hub and the tire. So we know we get it normal here. We got 42 and three quarter. And up front, 39 and a half. Let's go ahead and write that down before we forget. So you guys didn't see it, but I did the passenger side exactly the same way. 
In the rear, it's the same, 42 and three quarter. And in the front, it's slightly different, but we're not in the most perfectly flat parking lot here. So we're just gonna call that 39 and a half. So now we have our stock measurements. Well, focus, would you? Holy cow, what is this? Well, trust me, that's what that says. But now we have our measurements to go off of. So I cheated just a little bit and I installed the arm brackets while I was still at the house and I had access to all the tools. So this is super simple. There's just two flat pieces of steel and some half inch bolts. They clamp around the frame. They give you a, uh, a spec here that you wanna be from the center of the ball to here between 28 and 32 inches I think is the span that you want here. Which luckily for me, I landed right at 29 inches in between the propane tank and the battery box. So it just worked out perfectly. We're well within the range of what the book wants. And uh, all I did was install the brackets. You can see this part here, all these holes allow you to move this thing up and down. So it gives you a lot more adjustment to get everything just right, but we'll get to that. So the next step here is they want you to completely level the trailer. Get this thing as flat as you possibly can. And like I said, we're not in the best parking lot in the world, but this is way flatter than what I have at home. So it's gonna work out better for me. So I simply got a two foot level here. I'm gonna put it right on the floor of the trailer because I have so much stuff taken up on the tongue that I wouldn't be able to fit this thing and it probably wouldn't be the most accurate measurement anyway. So we're pretty close, but I need to bring the tongue up just a bit until this level says that we're perfectly flat. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but boy, that thing is dead nuts. It's perfect. And I tell you, this is really where that uh, electric tongue jack comes in handy because otherwise you'd be up there cranking your butt off trying to get this spot on. All right, so upon further investigation of the book here, it says level the trailer, but in quotations it says level to the ground. So apparently we can't go off of true level. It wants the frame of the trailer to be level with the ground that you're sitting on. So I just went ahead and did some quick measurements and we're about four inches off from that. So evidently there's a lot more of a slope here than I gave credit for. So we're gonna go ahead and change that a little bit and bring the front back down. I'm telling you, man, thank God for this electric jack. I wouldn't wanna be swinging this thing the whole time. But the more I thought about that, it actually makes sense because you're never gonna be on perfectly level ground. So it wants this thing to be set up for more real world applications. So you want the frame to be flat with whatever you're sitting on. So I get it, it makes sense. Let's get under here and measure the frame rail between the front and the rear. Let's see, I got uh, 23 and a quarter. Twenty-two and three quarter. So we gotta go down at least another half an inch. One last little check here. 23 inches, if my math is right, that means the last one's gonna be 23 also. Or at the very least, we're gonna be within an eighth of an inch, and I'm gonna call that good enough. So the next step here, once we got the trailer flattened out and everything, at least what the directions wants here, you see how this thing pivots? That's by design, it's supposed to. So you can, honestly, this, this changes like caster. If you guys are familiar with uh, aligning vehicles, that's the angle of the strut of the car. Anyway, I digress, but that's similar to what this measurement is gonna be. It just helps change the angle of the bars that are gonna be going to the tongue of the trailer. So you can change uh, the amount of spring and uh, the amount of load leveling that you get out of it. So it says in the book here that you wanna start with six spacer washers. And I guess that's just a, what does it say here? Recommend starting with six spacer washers for most setups. So yeah, why not just start with that and see where we go? I tell you, man, this can be a royal pain if you need to do this all day, but uh, for what we're gaining here, it's worth spending some time. You guys see this little kit I'm holding my hands here. This is something different that we'll get to later. Don't worry. Like I said, I'll link everything in the description. So I have six grade eight, well, they, they appear to be half inch washers on this pin here. And that's what changes the angle of your dangle. So go ahead and reinstall the top pin. Uh oh, we wanna start this thing in the middle. There's a bunch of different places that you can put this thing too. 
So I totally forgot we skipped a step. We need to measure the height of the ball socket on the trailer and do our best to match this up. So we'll start with that before we put this hardware in like all the way. All right, so the book says, get a measurement from the ground to the top of the coupler here. And we got 22 inches, pretty spot on. So it recommends setting our hitch ball one inch above that. So we're gonna go back to the truck and hook that thing up and try our best to get that ball so the top of it is 23 inches off the ground. Now bear in mind, this thing pivots. So make sure you have it pushed up tight against the hitch to get an accurate measurement. Man, I tell you, we may have got lucky. I think that's as close as it's gonna be. If I go up a full another one, that's gonna be way too much. So we're gonna call that good. And that is almost exactly 23 inches. It's not perfect, but I think that's gonna do us. And then there is a small bolt underneath here that acts as like a pivot. So it'll hold this thing up here whenever you're tightening your hardware. Crank these down by hand best we can. Scooch that up. Now we can tighten in that jam bolt underneath. So go ahead, grab yourself a 5 8 socket. Start winding in that bolt underneath. And it will start to pivot this thing. So everything stays nice and tight. And that's the goal. Recheck our measurements here. And I'm telling you, I know that you guys can't see this, but this is right about 23. I really think that's about as close as we're gonna get. So now we can go ahead and torque down this big hardware here to secure everything. In case you guys are wondering, these big giant bolts here, the socket size you need for this is inch and an eighth. So I know uh, most regular DIYers don't have this kind of stuff at their disposal. So either you need to go procure some borrow some, I don't know, go to your local auto parts store, they might have that loan a tool program. Or heck man, use this as an excuse to go get yourself some uh, big mamma jamma tools. Why not? If you guys are anything like me, you don't need an excuse to go buy new tools. So these things are pretty tight here. There is a torque spec for this and we're gonna do that later, but there's a good chance that we may need to change this because this is gonna be a lot of trial and error here. So I'm not gonna to bother torquing anything down just yet. All right, so we're back here at the book. After you do all the hitch stuff, the next thing is to put together those brackets on the tongue, like I already explained to you that I did. So we'll just skip that step. And the next thing we need to do is actually couple the trailer. Now, obviously, since we had to lower this thing to get our measurement earlier, we're gonna to need to pick it up to get it on the ball. So. Bring this thing back up so we have enough clearance to actually put it together. And let's see how good I am and if we can't get this thing together relatively easy. Evidently, I need to go up just a wee little bit more. But I tell you what, that was close. Check that out. I'm not gonna pull your leg, guys. There's a backup camera on this truck. Let's be serious. Nobody ever gets that on the first try. Cool, now that she's sunk down in there, we'll lock it. Take it all the way down, get all the weight on the hitch. And you see she's sinking pretty good. I mean, this is a three quarter ton HD, but this is also a big trailer. I think there's a, uh, oh heck, I don't know, probably eight or 900 pound tongue weight here. Now we got ourselves some clearance underneath the jack. We'll shut down the truck and do some measuring. Little side note here, guys. I mentioned how I pivoted the head on this tongue jack. I'm super glad that I did. Check that out. If this thing was facing forward like it comes from the factory, you wouldn't be able to do this. 
So just having access to your bed is really nice. I don't have to disconnect from the trailer just to open the tailgate. So uh, yeah, heads up, like I said, check out that video if you're interested. So the next thing the book wants us to do is now that we're coupled and without the spring arms attached, remeasure everything that we did beforehand. So we have a before and after about where the truck is sitting and we have something to go off of. So we're gonna do the exact same measurements that we did last time. Right at the center of the hub here, I got 41 and a half. And 40 and a half. And we'll compare that to our original measurements. Wow, so we went down an inch and a quarter in the rear and went up exactly an inch in the front. Honestly, that's not terrible, especially if you have an airbag set up. But the whole point of this thing is to use the mechanical advantage of the hitch to take that weight and not put it all on the suspension of the truck. Now that we have the before and after measurements done, the next thing it calls out is install the spring arms and then get that measurement. So we can hopefully find our happy middle and know if and when and how we need to adjust things. So guys, I'm not pulling your legs here. These things are ridiculously heavy. I mean, this is probably, oh, if I had to guess, I don't know, inch and a quarter or so, solid steel. I mean, this thing alone is probably 25 pounds. So, I'm not kidding you whenever they say this is a quality kit. It's good stuff. Now, if you guys can see here, one end of it has a notch taken out to fit around the hardware inside the hitch, and the other end is just square. That's the end that sticks out the side of the trailer. Not to mention the, uh, the sticker. Uh, just make sure it's facing front. So, there are retaining pins that go up in the front here. And if I could find any way to get this stupid pin out, there you go. We'll install the front. Install the lock. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, you guys may be wondering, hey, look at the angle of this thing. It's so far below this bracket. How are we supposed to get it on here? Well, you take your power tongue jack, like I'm super glad that I did, and you raise the trailer. So you think about it, you take up the tongue of the trailer, it will do this to the angle of your couple. So it will decrease the intensity of this angle, and then we can get it up on the bracket. But you see, I'm probably in the way here, up there where the bar connects to the hitch, this is on a pivot. You can pull these bars out of the way of this bracket, so whenever everything comes up, nothing crashes. Now let's use our tongue jack bring the trailer up, and you'll watch these bars start to raise as we do this. Just so you guys know, I have the trailer plug connected to the truck, because using the jack like this can really put a lot of drain on your batteries, so just having the truck running and keeping everything charged up, just a good idea, especially because we're gonna be messing with this for a while, so just, yeah. All right, you guys can see that I have this significantly higher than what it was. Like it even started picking up the truck with the hitch. So I don't wanna go crazy and put all that tension on the hitch for no reason. So this kit comes with this crazy little like, I don't know, looks like a prison weapon or something. But this is a pry bar specifically built for getting these things on here. This little hook indexes into the square where the locking pin goes. And then this nice little French curve here just whoop, swaps this thing up onto here. So let's do that. Yeah, that's violent, but hey, that's manly. That thing is on there. So we have this giant, looks like three quarter inch locking pin. That goes on there and simply secure the thing down underneath it. No, oh, guys, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I completely forgot on the other side. This kit that I mentioned earlier, this is a, like an anti-squeak kit from the manufacturer for this style of hitch. If you guys have ever experienced this or been around a campground where somebody's pulling a trailer and it just makes like horrendous noises the whole time, it sounds like it's coming apart. What that noise is, is the friction of this bar sliding over this bracket. And honestly, that's how this thing works. It's designed to do that. It's not a bad noise, it's just, unpleasant and kind of embarrassing when you're rolling through the campground. So they made these 
I don't even know what these things are. Nylon, probably. Brackets that fit over top of that L bracket to have a little bit better of a gliding surface so it doesn't make that horrendous noise. We're going to go ahead and install these things and uh, just, I don't know, one step ahead here. So the way these things install is actually really nice. You can see the way that it's cut out here. It indexes with that L bracket and then the front of it is even ramped to help you get the bar on. So it simply slides over right like that and it stays on. Now we can put this side up on there just like we did on the other and I'm going to have to redo the other side and put it back on. So we'll take our fancy uh, prison weapon here, get everything where it needs to be. And lock her down. Yeah, you gotta wrestle with this thing for a little bit, but honestly, it's okay. It lets me know for sure that everything is where it needs to be. Everybody's happy. Tell it to go home. Make sure this is locked and you're all set. Now that we have everything reinstalled again, guys, use my stupidity as your advantage here. Just take your time with this and do it. But whenever you're filming and doing all this stuff at the same time, I'm trying to think of camera angles. I'm trying to think of what to say. I'm trying to do the project too. So have some mercy on me. But now that we have the bars connected and everything's put together, we'll raise the jack or lower it, however you want to look at it, and put the weight back on the truck and get those measurements again. And there we go, man. I can tell just by looking at this, it probably changed the stance of this thing by a solid two inches. So now that we have all of the weight sitting on the truck and the equalizer hitch is like doing its thing, we'll redo those measurements just like the book wants us to and see if we fall within that spec of correct. All right, so one last time here, we're gonna do these measurements. Now that the hitch is installed and the spring bars are in there, same thing right in the center of the hub. We are at 40, 41, seven eighths, 42, we'll just call it 42. And back here, we are at 39 and three quarter. Let's compare that to what we have before. So 42 in the rear, 39 and three quarter. Holy cow, guys. I know, I don't know why this isn't focusing on stuff close up here. But, let me try to move you here. 's you bloody thing holy cow I don't know why this isn't working but just take it for granted here so when we did our first measurement before everything was coupled together and just the truck sitting there alone and the rear was 42 and three quarter and in the front was 39 and a half once we hooked it up without the spring bars the rear was 41 and a half and the front was 40 and a half so obviously things changed the pitch of the truck was taking the weight of the trailer. Now that we have everything installed the way it's supposed to be, and this is like technically the way you would go down the road, the rear is 42, so we've sunk three quarters of an inch in the back. So there's a little bit of weight on the axle, but not nearly what we had before. And the front is 39 and three quarters, so we've raised a quarter of an inch. Now, unfortunately, as much as you guys are gonna love this, the next part is actually math. It tells you here, all these measurements that you recorded there is a formula here that they want you to do to find a percentage of weight distribution. So it wants you to find the difference between the uh, measurement without the weight distribution hitch put together, like without the spring bars, and the measurement when everything is put together correctly. Once you get that number, divide it by the difference between no spring bars and uncoupled completely and then that will give you your thing so give me some time to figure this out and we'll see if we're within their range they want you to be between 50 and 100 percent so we'll see what we got here Alrighty, guys after some technical difficulty there i mean excuse me math was never my strong suit but once i figured out what they wanted us to find here they said take the difference between the second two measurements and divide that number by the first two measurements and then once you get that value multiply that result by 100. That'll give you your percent. And we landed right at 75%.
And if you look here, there is a gauge in the book that tells you between 50 and 100% is a good adjustment. And we landed dead nuts right in the middle of that thing at 75%. So I will call that freaking perfect. So now we can go through and torque everything down to the spec in the book. And I think we can uh, wrap this one up. Alrighty, now that we've verified everything and we're happy with our measurements, according to the book, it's good. I know I am Mr. Not Follow Instructions, but for some things, you just have to. I'm, I'm sorry. I know that goes against my everything, but for something this important, yeah, we need to do it. So, like I said earlier, you may not have some of this bigger tooling that you may need. So, it says in the book here, those big three-quarter inch shank bolts that go through the hitch, those big grade eight ones, you need to torque those to 320 foot-pounds. I know that's a lot, and most torque wrenches can't handle that. Luckily, I have one that will, but if you guys need to, like I said, go to your local parts store. They probably have that Lona Tool program where you can get something. Or if not, honestly, just hang on that thing until you're happy. I know it's not perfect, but you got to do what you can do. Well, guys, I didn't bother showing you the torquing process of those bolts because I didn't need to see you give myself a hernia. So uh, trust me, they are ridiculously tight. It was everything I had, but they're there. So hopefully you guys get something out of this. And if you need to do this process for yourself, hopefully this makes it go a little bit smoother. So if you guys enjoyed this, like I said, check out that original video about doing the tongue jack. And uh, hopefully this makes it easier for somebody. We will see you guys next time.